Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Chris Hine. I'm a developer advocate here at AWS uh, and also a CNCF ambassador. Super excited to be at KubeCon. Uh, this is going to be a really exciting week for everybody. Uh, so realistically, I'm not actually doing anything with you other than talking about this. So this is a uh, fully public uh, workshop that anybody in this room can actually go, deal with, uh, go actually work on and go through all the different modules in there. Um, it's, I should actually show my URL bar so you can see the full thing. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. So if you just go to eksworkshop.com, uh, this, you'll get to this landing page, and it's self-guided. You can walk through this. We also do this uh, at a lot of events. We didn't want to pack this into today because we have so much other good content, all the demos that are coming up. Um, and so if you want to, you're more than welcome to basically step through this. A couple things that are really nice that it goes through is how to set up EKS clusters. So it'll walk you through how to launch a cluster using EKS Cuddle uh, by Weaveworks. It'll also show you how to do it uh, using CloudFormation and then walks you through doing a lot of really interesting functions of EKS and a lot of the open source tools that make EKS really good. Uh, so how to deploy the dashboard, um, how to do like an example microservice application, and you can actually see the manifest, you can deploy them into your own cluster, and uh, really play with the different bits. You'll see that this application, for example, is three microservices that go along. Um, each one is written in a different language in the full polyglot microservice way um, to really to, to drive home the example of what EKS is power, what makes EKS powerful. As well, uh, it'll show you how to deploy Helm charts, do auto scaling in your clusters, how to do things like cluster auto scaler, how to do things like uh, HPA, all of these things that, again, make Kubernetes great and EKS great. Uh, and then it'll even walk through how to deploy service meshes, which you'll learn a little bit more about pretty soon. And then I have 17 minutes to basically talk through this whole thing. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Uh, but we'll probably go a little bit faster than that, because what's going to happen at, if I recall correctly, Ignacio, that was 2.30. Is he still in the room? Anyways, I think at 2.30, you guys can go out to the uh, front where you checked in, and you get a little card like this. And on the back of it, it has a promo code, which will give you $200 in free credits, which is for you to use throughout the rest of this week or for whenever you want to. And you can go through all of the modules in this and really learn how to use EKS, deploy clusters, deploy all these tools. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much about it. It's a pretty fast uh, talk. And I'm going to take this over, pass this actually over with even more time to Stefan Proden to basically demo deploying uh, his Flagger application and showing how to use App Mesh. Bob wants to come up as well. Partly because. Do we have? So earlier, oh, this is great. Earlier, we were talking about operators, oh, and yeah, I was I looking for Chris, up. and he had to step out for something. So if you're interested in talking about AWS operators, this is your guy, right? Here. Yeah. So uh, what Bob is talking about is the AWS service operator. Uh, so how to deploy AWS services directly using, sorry, using uh, Kubernetes. So you can actually do things like, uh, here, I can actually pull it up. So this is actually the project that Bob was just talking about. Um, he brought this up, and thank you. I forgot to, to call out. I was gone, so yes, that's me. If you're interested in talking about this, this project uh, will actually, and there's a module in the workshop that goes through this even. Uh, it'll show you how to deploy things like a DynamoDB table directly from Kubernetes using CRDs uh, and have it automatically connected into your application so you don't have to, uh, you don't have to configure any of the connections between there. Um, same with like an S3 bucket, if you wanted to deploy a static website using S3 and have the assets being automatically uploaded, it really walks through how to do all of that stuff. So happy to talk about that throughout the rest of the week or today if you want to grab me.